Mr. Honourable Speaker, Joe Goodhue. I rise with much pleasure to support the Prime Minister's um, statement and his speech. And I rise in doing so absolutely sure that this government continues to implement its plan to build a faster growing economy, more jobs, higher incomes and support New Zealanders and their families. And there are so many different examples that I just can't wait to tell you. I am going to start, however, with something that is an absolute example happening in my electorate, announced today um, by the Minister for Social Development. You see, this government, this government is the government that doesn't just talk about things. This is the government that actually has action that eventuates in outcomes that are good for New Zealanders. And that's the way it should be. So today, the Honourable Paula Bennett announced the results of a recruitment partnership in Mid Canterbury in my electorate of Rangitata. So the Terrace View Retirement Village opened back in November. And they had a requirement that they needed at least 25 new staff, um, probably closer to 30, and most of them working on part-time hours. So what they did was they went to work an income and they said, we're going to need some more staff, and they got themselves into this recruitment partnership. Now, the people that were actually successful in going into work from work and income numbered 11. There were others as well that they recruited. And this was indeed a partnership made in heaven, because some of these people were beneficiaries referred for the job openings. Some of them had been on, on a benefit for a while. Some of them had never worked. But in fact, there were jobs, real jobs, real jobs, not imaginary jobs, there for them. And this has been very, very successful. So this is about case managers that actually understand what their job is, not just to simply have people trundling in and out through the office, but actually to take these people, these real people, and assist them into jobs. Rather than so, what have we got? We've got um, we've got thousands and thousands of New Zealanders now in jobs who had been relying on benefits for some years. They also do an NZQA-approved caregiving course. They're getting qualifications. Over 1,500 people are leaving the benefit every single week and becoming financially independent as a result. And actually, this is where we've got another disconnect because apparently. We have huge amounts of poverty in New Zealand, but what's the way out of poverty? There's two ways, education and work, and they are very intricately linked. So what we've got on the other side of the house is we've got something that um, this week was called a best start. Well, I'd have to say it was a mediocre start, maybe even a worse start, but they're calling it a best start. What I would suggest... A false start. What I, yeah, a false start. A false start? A false start. What I would actually suggest to the opposition is that when they try and sell this policy, when they decide what this policy actually is, when they've determined how many people might actually be able to apply for it and receive this $60, that they actually hand out free magnifying glasses. Because by golly, any policy under this Labour opposition is going to need the fine print very carefully read. So free magnifying glasses out of the Labour Party budget would be a really, really good idea. Um, it's it's evidence-based policies that actually create real change for New Zealanders that will continue to keep this country humming. And it is humming. What did we have last year? 3.5 per cent growth. That at least coming this, this coming year. Boy, that must be hard to swallow for an opposition, um, Labour and, and Greens, who are wanting to convince New Zealanders that they're going backwards when they don't feel like they are. Business confidence is soaring. It's at its highest in how many years? 13 years? Oh, 20 years, is it? Well, there you go. So this is what we've got happening under this government. It's been a steady as you go, because actually... Although the opposition trumpet surpluses, what they've forgotten was the sorry end to their surpluses. Uh, an economy, a tradable economy, going south before That's the right. global financial crisis That's even right. arrived. Actually, they've forgotten about their short-term memory. There must be a bit of a health problem there. They're short so, presented with 10 years of deficits, they wonder why we haven't experienced a surplus. Their 10 years of deficits left on a plate for us before the global financial crisis really even kicked in. And then there was a small thing like, oh, a couple of large earthquakes. The biggest hit on a GDP basis 
well, the second biggest, I think, for any sort of Western nation around the world. So from an insurance perspective, yes, we now have the opportunity for lots of jobs, but that has been a significant fiscal thump that this government has had to negotiate its way through. So what happened during the GFC? Did this government cut benefits? No. no. Did this government protect New Zealanders from what we called the potential sharp edges of the recession? Absolutely we did. And one of the things I'm going to go on, because one of my responsibilities is older New Zealanders, and they give me lots of feedback. They're very good at giving feedback. They do engage, not only in voting, but they engage with politicians, and that's great, because we know what they're thinking. And they're actually, they're actually pretty comfortable with the fact that their super has increased by 25% since 2008. Not a bad story, is it? That under this government, we actually enshrined in legislation we enshrined in legislation that they would get super at, uh, from the age of 65 at 66% of the average wage, not the ethereal 65% it must be, maybe 66% this year, but we can't promise it ongoing. One would think the opposition could have done that while they were there. So older New Zealanders care about crime. They really care about being safe in their communities. And I tell you, the country is outraged when we read about crime against older people. So it really does help their sense of security to know that crime is at its lowest in 33 years. Do we still need to make more um, inroads on that? Absolutely we do. But we have now tougher bail, sentencing and parole laws, and we are keeping the worst of the criminals behind bars. And then, older New Zealanders disproportionately are the people who are requiring elective surgery. That's just the nature of growing older. We know that. So when we tell them that although there are some people that are still waiting for their surgery, and nothing has changed since the opposition were in government, I might remind them. So there was no one waiting for surgery back then. Actually, we had 30,000 people that were sent off the list. Nobody was interested in them. We didn't send them back to their GP. We didn't engage them in exercise classes that would help them until their surgery came along. None of that happened under the previous government. So what have we got? We've got 2007-2008, 118,000 people got elective surgery. Now, any way you put it, 158,000 this last year is a 30, what have we got, a 34% increase a 34% increase. That is reassuring. What's more, we are giving certainty. When you go on that list, your surgery will be. When you go on the list for your appointment, when you go on the list, you know you're going to get it. You're not going to be on... Oh, look, I can remember the stories about waiting lists and people were on them for a year, for two years, for three years. They never knew when their surgery was going to happen, but they were reassured because they were on a list. They thought that was actually going to happen. Actually, the other thing that older people care about is they care about their children and grandchildren, and particularly their grandchildren getting a good education. And what they will tell you is they remember the school teachers that made a difference for them. I absolutely remember the principles that made a difference for me. Unfortunately, I also remember the ones that didn't. But that's the way it is. So we know the ones, and we watched it with our own, own children when they were growing up. We saw which, which teachers inspired them, and we wanted them to stay in that class for every year. And that's because that's where they really learned. That's where they loved education. Those were the subjects, goodness, I can remember one subject that I sat at high school, where the whole class failed. I know. Uh, fortunately, that person left teaching. However, they're also really keen to know that their children and grandchildren are going to be getting jobs. We've reduced unemployment by 53,000. You talk to an older person and they say, my child, my, my son, my daughter is out of work, and it breaks their heart because they know that they want to be in work. So we are heading, as a government, in the right direction under the stewardship of Prime Minister John Key. And he has an absolutely united caucus, everyone doing their bit, We've got fantastic things happening in primary industries, and I'm proud to be associated with that. We've got irrigation happening in my constituency. We've got the Acceleration Fund, and we've also got the Irrigation Investment Company. 
we actually are not resting on our laurels. We are not throwing cash around in a lolly scramble. What we are doing is getting absolute real results out of New Zealanders. And they come up to me in my electorate every week. They come up to me and they tell me they appreciate the fact that we understand fiscal responsibility as a government, this national-led government. Thank you. Order, Brendan.